Good morning, everybody, and welcome. I'm glad everybody made it here safely. Um, it may be dreary outside, but it is not dreary in here. We are super excited to have everybody here. And my name is Dr. Miosha Williams. I serve as the Assistant Superintendent of Academic Services for Fayette County Public Schools. We appreciate so much the support that the community shows to our students across the district. As we discuss a renewed focus um, on our early childhood education today, we know that your support will expand to include our birth to five age group. That is so important to creating a lifelong learning experience for our students. For many of you, this work is already ingrained in what you do every day, and so we want to take that moment to just thank you for your tireless efforts. A special thank you to Mayor, Mayor Linda Gordon, Gorton and our council members who have chosen to uh, join us today. And uh, she is going to be the first one who comes up to address you today. And I wanna tell you just a little bit about her because throughout her career, she has been an advocate for all, beginning with our earliest learners. As a mother and grandmother, she has been seen the importance of early childhood learning in her own home. We appreciate her continued recognition of the importance of this work. And so without further ado, we'd like to welcome Maya Linder Gorton now to the podium. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, you reminded me, um, I have a, a bag at home that's Gigi's bag of books. And whenever my grandchildren are at my house, they go first for the bag of books to see what's in it. Um, thank you so much for that. And thank you to everyone for being here today at our Family Care Center. I am so happy to be here with you, Dr. Liggins, and everyone involved with First Five Lex, early childhood education, because all of us know that's the key. That is the key to so much in life. And how exciting for us to be joined, where are you, John? <laughs> to be joined by my new friend, famed children's book author, John Archambault. And I just have to say, chicka chicka boom boom. <laughs> I told John I used to have it memorized. I had read it so many times to children and grandchildren. And I thank you for being here and, and taking some time in Lexington to focus on youth education. Thank you. I'd like to recognize council member Jennifer Reynolds, who's here with us. Thank you. Um, she, has a, she actually has a retreat at 11 o'clock, so it's really great that you took time to be here. First, I want to brag a little bit on our Commissioner of Social Services, Casey Allen Bryant, right back there, um, and also our Family Care Center staff. They do an amazing job right here serving our community. And we also have our current director, Sheila Horton Holt, and our former director is here, I think, someplace, Joanna. Oh, right there. Thank you all for your dedication to the Family Care Center and what it does for our community. The Family Care Center is well known across the nation for programming that supports families with young children. Opening its doors in 1989, the center has attracted much attention and prominent visitors from high-profile guests like Colin Powell, Princess Anne, and Hillary Clinton. The Family Care Center is known nationally as a leader and model for providing affordable child care and promoting early childhood education. There's also programming here for new and expectant parents, high school parent education, pediatric health care in collaboration with the University of Kentucky, and much, much more. This is all because of the vision of Mayor Scotty Basler, his Commissioner of Social Services, Barbara Curry, 
the center's first director, Jean Saberwall, and those who have followed their lead. I'm also very proud of our Fayette County public school system. Both of my children, as well as my husband, are graduates of Lafayette High School. I was a band parent there and served on PTA groups, and we understand the value of the public schools. Although we have opportunities for improvement, we're doing a great job overall. One of the most important aspects for having a strong school system is community collaboration. We all know this. We must have our community involved in helping support our students, parents, teachers, school bus drivers, administrators, and school staff. We are all in this together. Our quality of education has a direct connection to the strength of our city, the strength of Lexington. An educated community means an educated workforce. And having an educated workforce means more people are able to have good paying jobs and live happy, productive lives. That's why it is so important we have a strong foundation of education beginning at birth. In 2010, Fayette County Public Schools announced a new initiative, First Five Lex. The goal was to encourage our community to work with families and caregivers to read, talk, play with children in their first five years, those formative years. The city's been a partner in that initiative and in other early childhood education initiatives like Head Start. And we are here today a partner with Fayette County Public Schools committed to supporting our youngest learners. So I want to thank you all very much for having me here, for being here, and Dr. Liggins, I so appreciate our work together. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for those encouraging words and your partnership. We really appreciate it. Next coming to the podium is uh, Dr. Uh, Demetrius Liggins. Fayette County Public Schools is committed to providing a world-class education for students across the district, and Superintendent Liggins is the leader of this charge. Today, he is going to share with you his vision for early childhood education in Lexington and how it will be put into action into the coming months. So please, without further ado, welcome uh, Dr. Demetrius Liggins. Good morning, and thank you all for being here. Um, this is, I'm really excited about this initiative and excited about our community coming together. Thank you, Mayor, for your partnership and um, being a thought partner and ensuring that we as a community continue to excel and grow. And it all begins with our smallest of learners. Um, when I was an elementary bilingual teacher, um, I had students from all over Latin America in my classroom. In Texas, students have the opportunity to learn in their native language um, um, until fifth grade. And gradually, each grade level transitions to, um, to English um, so that they, by the time they get to middle school, they're um, completely biliterate and um, bilingual. And so I was a third grade teacher. So as you can imagine, um, I had students in my class that had um, varying ability levels, whether that be from <laughs> skill sets that happens just naturally, or whether it was actually um, their language ability. Some students have been born in the US and simply their parents did not speak English at home, so they did not learn, begin to start learning English or until they became um, students in our school systems. And others came at varying times um, before third grade and some arrived in my classroom the first day um, in school um, learn, um, to learn English. And so I took it upon myself as a, a new teacher to 
to talk to every single one of my families and caregivers about their child. I initially did this simply because I wanted to learn a little bit more about uh, the kids so that I could give them the best quality education, build a relationship with the family, et cetera. And, um, and so obviously different homes, different cultures, different priorities, there's different things that people took um, and shared with me. But one thing that I saw in common despite all of the differences that exist between us as human beings in general, families who read, spoke, and played with their kids, those students, I realized, did better academically. I began to realize also that they became leaders in the classroom. Uh, and they had more confidence, and they just overall was more well-rounded. This was well before um, education had really started paying a lot of attention to brain research. So I, I really didn't put it together until um, many years later. Um, but um, early childhood education and kindergarten readiness, as we know, therefore, begins well before um, children start their first day in the classroom. Um, brain education research tells us that the, from birth to five year old, to five years old, a child's brain develops more than any other time in their lifetime. And in fact, by the time they're fifth, uh, by the time they're five years old, 90% of their brain development have occurred. And so early um, brain development have a lasting impact on a child's ability to learn and succeed in life. And the quality of a child's experience in those five pivotal years um, of life, both positive and negatively, helps shape the brain for the remainder of their lives and most definitely throughout their educational experience. As parents, caregivers, and community members, we can help children's brain development. And it's not complicated, actually. It doesn't require hours of training. It doesn't require an advanced degree. In fact, it doesn't require a degree at all. It simply requires that we read, talk, and play with our students. Parents, families, and caregivers are our children's first teachers long before they arrive in any of our classrooms. Therefore, the, this community-based initiative, First Five Lex, helps children, families, and caregivers read, talk, and play from birth to kindergarten so that they are well-equipped when they um, head into our classrooms for the first time. So why now is there a renewed focus on early childhood education across our community? Well, in the 2021-22 school year, just last year, um, for, we had the lowest scores ever on kindergarten readiness. When students enter school in Fayette County Public Schools for kindergarten, they're giving an assessment to determine um, what, if they are kindergarten ready or not. One of the, th um, the things that, it t some of the things that test is adaptive, um, cognitive, motor, and communication, as well as emotional, um, social emotional skills. This past year, it was the lowest from, for the first time since it was implemented in 2013. It was only 42% of our students were able, were classified as kindergarten readiness. So as we begin a new year, calendar year, not school year, it's a perfect opportunity to renew our focus for our littlest learners. Today serves as a kickoff of this renewed energy, and we're excited to share the upcoming plans for our families, caregivers, and our community members. Uh, the early childhood learning initiative we are announcing today is a living, breathing plan. Um, it's not static, it's um, a piece of paper that's just sit there. It is something that will, is intended to grow, change, evolve, and adapt as we work together as community members, as caregivers, to do what's best um, for our students and what's best for our community as a whole. Um, this year, we begin the implementation of our five-year strategic plan, a new way forward. Um, this title is just not a tagline. Um, it's the direction in which we are going, and it's the course of action we will take in order to get there. That being said, our, go our goal is a bold one. Um, by the year 2027-28 school year, our goal is to ensure that 100% of students who are entering kindergarten have the prerequisite skills 
to be ready from day one to begin their learning experience and move forward from there. As a school system, as, com as a community, as individuals, we all, um, we're always talking about closing the achievement gap. Well, imagine this, and that is a lot of pressure that's placed on our teachers, on our educators, each and every day. When students are coming to us, and only 42% are kindergarten ready from day one. And our teachers, mind you, are some of the hardest working individuals I know, and educators are passionate about closing the achievement gap and doing what it takes. But when 58% of our students come to school already behind, there's something we must do as a community together if we're ever going to close that gap. We cannot do it alone. Um, the mission of FCPS is to create a collaborative community that ensures all students achieve at high levels and graduate prepared to excel in a global society. society. This means a concerted effort on kindergarten readiness. The FCPS strategic plan highlights um, our district's commitment as we move forward in five focus areas. One is student achievement. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging is the second. Um, a highly effective, culturally responsive workforce, outreach and engagement, and organizational health and effectiveness. In the area of academic development, we are committed to expanding access to pre-kindergarten, especially for our economically disadvantaged students, as well as our students who are English learners. We're also committing to early communications expectations to students, as well as working alongside families to navigate this path. Instead of beginning this work when children come into our classroom doors, this energized focus on early childhood education will be communicate, um, means we will communicate benchmarks with our parents beginning from the birth of their child while also navigating the path as they continue throughout um, their work until they enter into Fayette County Public Schools or whichever school system, whether it be homeschooling or um, private school within our communities to ensure that every five and six year old is prepared when they enter into a kindergarten classroom. Some of our initial efforts include in and continuing to join our partners from the good work that has already been done across our, um, our city while introducing some new elements to better um, support our families and um, caregivers as a whole. We're fortunate to live in a community that really values education and is willing to put in the work that's necessary in order to get our children where they need to be. And so such partnerships like the Lexington Public Library, um, Kentucky Educational Television, the Explorium of Lexington, local daycares, um, our children hospitals, and many others that work to support the, the vision and mission of Fayette County Public Schools but also the mission of our city um, for learning every single day. We plan to continue these collaborations, of course, um, but with an, a renewed effort to harness uh, the work that is being done to ensure families know what is available to them and how to access it. Um, we're looking to expand these, expand these partnerships to ensure we're bringing all parties and that are passionate about this work to the table. <coughs> both our nonprofit and for-profit partners. We will begin asking businesses to join us, um, not only to help promote the read, talk, and play message, but um, to share it with their employees, with their customers, but also collaborate with their physical spaces, such as downtown, uh, downtown learning scavenger hunt that we have planned um, in the um, coming spring. Um, growth and development guides are important pieces of this work. Preschool and kindergarten guides will be created and shared with caregivers, um, providing information and strategies that will help continued growth. Um, experience guides will also be made available to families. Um, this experience guide will be providing a list of experiences for families of Lexington who have children birth to three years old and describe how these experiences will enhance language, literacy, and learning overall. Um, an online app um, and several other resources that are app-based will be available um, to Lexington families. Uh, there will be a first five Lex app 
um, which will be released in the coming months that will list all resources available throughout our community that will help in this initiative and promote learning at home. And we will ensure that at all stages of development that we are available as a school system to intervene and help whenever necessary to ensure that students are getting the support that they need um, well before, again, they enter into our classrooms. Having access to these tools and the data that we'll be collecting can provide us um, and allow us to assist families if a child is not only progressing with certain development in certain areas, but we do not have to wait until they begin kindergarten again to offer this support. So it is critical that families understand, should they see a delay, should they have some concerns, there are services available not only through our city, um, but through our school system as well. Um, one very noticeable effort we will start is um, the rolling downtown Lexington streets next month. Um, we're excited to introduce the preschool mobile buses. Um, we are calling these classrooms on wheels. Um, these buses will take preschool fun and curriculum into Lexington neighborhoods, complete with fully licensed staff members um, who will read, talk, and play with our students, as well as teach our families and caregivers how to do it as well. These professionals are critical to our success um, and they will absolutely be um, around for anyone to utilize and going into the neighborhoods where um, they are needed most. There's, a there's also an amazing effort that we are thrilled to, that will be coming to Lexington soon. And with that announcement, I'd like to bring Carrie Bowling, our Executive Director of the Fayette County Education Foundation, up to the podium. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Liggins, Mayor Gorton, and Dr. Williams. Um, I am the executive director of the Fayette Education Foundation. And when the foundation was created in the fall of 2020, we set our mission around incre increasing equity and excellence in education in Fayette County public schools. Put simply, our goal is to fulfill unmet educational needs, remove barriers to learning, and make it easy for the public to support the school district in creative ways. We took a hard look at data. The kindergarten readiness scores jumped out at us as well. As Dr. Liggins mentioned earlier, um, early childhood education and kindergarten readiness begins well before children start their first day in school. Many of our kiddos were behind before they even stepped foot in a classroom. And we know readers succeed. One of the most important things we can do to improve early literacy is give our children access to books. Inspired by her father's inability to read and write, Dolly Parton started her imagination library in 1995 for the children in her home county in Tennessee. Today, her program fi spans five countries and gifts over two million books a month to children around the world. With the goal of inspiring a love of reading, the voluntary program gifts books each month to children from birth to age five, free of charge to families through funding shared by Parton and local communities. Inspired by Imagination Library success, last year, Kentucky legislators passed Senate Bill 164, which supports funding 50% of the cost of bringing an uh, Imagination Library to children in the Commonwealth. The other 50% is funded by Parton and other community partners. Until today, Fayette County was one of only five counties in Kentucky with no coverage. We are thrilled to announce registration is officially open for our littlest learners, children ages birth to five. With support from individuals and organizations such as Bluegrass Community Foundation, the Junior League of Lexington, First Five Lex, the Fayette County Education Foundation is working with partners across the community to enroll the over 19,000 children eligible to receive books. Families can register online at FayetteFoundation.org or via paper forms that can be found at every Lexington Public Library branch, as well as other locations across the county. If your business or organization serves uh, families of young children, holler and we'll, we'll bring some posters and some uh, registration forms out to you. Also, I encourage you to donate to the Fayette Education Foundation's Imagination Library Fund. It costs about $30 a year to supply one child with a book every single month for one year. 
And you know there's nothing better than cracking open a brand new book. We are a proud partner in providing our earliest learners in Fayette County with the resources to prepare them for their future success in school and in life. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bowling. Um, as mentioned before, the work that is being done will continue to expand and grow as we move further into this um, renewed effort. Um, this is a starting point, but it will not be where we stop. Um, talking about, we've been having to, oh, one of the things we did when we had the strategic planning process for Fayette County that was implemented this year, the new way forward that I spoke about, um, we had dozens of community members come, parents, um, faith community, um, city government, um, just educators um, and just community members in general come together and advise us on where did we want to see education in the next five years in Lexington, Kentucky, and Fayette County. Um, of all of the information we received, which was invaluable that went into the plan that we are currently implementing, there was one statement that was made that just stuck with me throughout this process. A certain individual that had been in our community for a while, quite prominent, and had been involved in these um, in previous years, stood up and said, we've been having some of these same conversations for 20 years, and we have a little to show for it. Now, I would take some issue with having little to show for it. There's been a lot of progress in the school system for 20 years, but there still are things that still exist, such as the achievement gap. And so when we talk about a new way forward and we talk about this initiative to read, talk, and play with our students, I don't know if I said it in the right order, um, this is important work. This is work that will change the trajectory of students' lives forever. This is work that if we work together can change lives of people in this community that can be an example to the rest of our nation as to how it's done. And as the educational leader in this community, I'm more than willing to lead this work and is very confident in the team we have to support this work. However, again, it's going to take all of us. We need to ensure that our students are getting what they need before they enter into our classrooms. And I promise you we will help along the way, and once they get there, we will take it from there. Thank you so much for your time, and um, I'll hand it back over to Dr. Williams. Okay, so as Dr. Liggins just shared, it's going to take everybody in our community and it starts with the people in this room. So I'm gonna put you to work. Are you ready for your call to action? Okay, excellent. So here's what that looks like. Wherever you are on the continuum of being supportive in this effort, it starts today, a renewed focus on ensuring that our birth to five learners have all of us behind them to make sure that they are prepared for their first day of kindergarten. So there are a couple of ways that you can be involved. How can I help? I'm so glad you asked. First, before you leave, please make sure that on this back table, there are lots of resources how you can get involved. The first one looks like this. It's talking about how you are making a commitment today to support early childhood learning. We want to hear from you, we want to connect with you and keep you involved with how you can help. Second, many of you already have these stickers on to show that you support early childhood learning. There are stacks of them back there. So take some and give them out to everyone that you encounter to make sure that we are creating early childhood champions in our community. The third thing that you'll see back there are, um, it's a little flyer, it's two-sided, and this talks about the two events that we have going on immediately this weekend with um, our guest author, uh, John Archambault, who is going to be all around the city this weekend to help get us kicked off in the right way. 
And then, if you see people along the way, or maybe if you're um, stopping by a restroom, grab some business cards related to how people can get involved. It's a QR code. It tells a little bit about First Five Lex. Just stick them everywhere that you go and hand them out to people that you talk to, right? It's that important because it really is going to take all of us. And so we wanna thank everybody for coming out today. We are so excited about what is gonna happen in our community. Um, we also are so thankful to John, who is gonna be sticking around to um, provide a, a little mini performance for some of our uh, learners here at the Family Care Center um, after the press conference is concluded. And so what the takeaway is, is that no matter what your role is or your organization, you can take part in this effort. So remember, it is as simple as reading, talking, and playing. So thank you so much, and we hope you have a fabulous day.